All right, so now we have some mapping lines, and I, I went over them with a darker paint. This is not how dark I would usually do mapping, but just so that you can see it better. So what was the point of all that? Why do we even map? It's boring, it's tedious, it feels like it's infringing on my creative freedom. Why do we do it? Well, it is really going to improve your work if you map because you're going to get some more interesting, more natural shapes. It's going to keep you from doing things like this, where your hair is coming straight down, super boring. But, you know, fall, if you have these lines, you know you have to follow then you're gonna you're gonna make these inter more interesting curves. So for the swirl, I I see some beginners where you know a, a line will just come across the middle, just crazy like that. And if you had it mapped out, you would see that you cannot do that. You need to follow these lines as precisely as you can. Everything is coming out of the swirl. So these lines are the most precise. Where's my little eraser thingy? So that's with a small brush. Let's say you want to use a big dagger brush. Now you know to start. So I, I would use a tiny brush right at the swirl as I'm filling that in. I probably wouldn't take a dagger brush all the way there. You could if you're good with a dagger brush. But I'm a little out of practice. So I'll start my dagger brush here. what I wanted to do. That. So you can fill in in between with a dagger brush, with a round brush, with a skinny brush, whatever you like. But everywhere that the hair, wherever you start, so Wherever the hair starts, you need to be very precise in following the lines. But where that hair ends is where you can have some fun. So start very strict right here where it follows, we're going to follow the line, but at the end of the line, you can make it curve off to the side. So let's think of this in terms of the movie, The Sound of Music. This is the Von Trapp children. This is Liesel, and this is Gretel. They are your mapping lines. The rest of the children are the lines that you're gonna make in between your mapping lines. This is Captain Von Trapp. He has a whistle and he will blow it if you get out of line and you'll get in trouble. So that is you at the swirl and at the beginning of these lines. Very strict. Liesel, Friedrich, all of you guys stay in line. Hmm? But once you get like partway through your line, now you can go hang out with 
fun Maria and sing songs on the hill and have a good time. So now you can do something different. You can cross it over, over some other lines. You can have it come out like this. You can be more creative on on this the at the end of your line you can be more creative. At the beginning of the line, you gotta stay in line. So let's do another one on top. So we're at the swirl. That means everybody is lined up. Do not go out of the line. Do not leave the line. Now we're here, we're dancing around the floor. We're dancing around, we're having a good time, we're doing something different. Okay, so what would I do for this again? Very strict beginning and more fun end. Do another one. Everybody line up. Follow the lines exactly. Okay, now we're free. Nobody's looking. We're gonna go play and sing songs and do a curve, do something creative. Mm -hmm. I'll keep going through. Stay in line. Stay in line. And have fun. So you see how these lines, they may feel like they're stifling your creativity, but they're going to give you a guide that will help your creativity. The lines stay. We're not. We're not gonna mess this up. We're gonna keep it straight. We're gonna curve it around. Just not do anything crazy. But now, now that we've curved it around, we can get a little crazy. We can sweep it off to the side. Make a little curve. I would probably make those curves after I've filled this in. So I, I would probably first go over this with, you know, whatever brush. Do this with a round brush. I would kind of first fill this in a little bit. Oh, look at that. That's beading. We don't want that. I think there's just a little too much water on this brush. Wipe it off. Try it again. It's a little better. Follow the curves. Follow, follow. Follow the curves. So mapping is your friend. Mapping is both a constraint and a way to be creative. Then I would I would come back later after this dries and I would maybe add just some smaller darker hairs give it some definition
So I've worked on this for a while. Might want to add some flyaways. And you know, it's in the name, flyaways. They just, they just fly away randomly. So you just like throw them in anywhere, kind of like that. No, no you do not. No, and don't make Captain Von Trapp blow his whistle at you. Because the flyaways need to follow the same pattern that we've been doing. If I want to do a flyaway here, it needs to start where the hair is already going, and then you can swoop it off to the side if you like. Maybe we have some flyaways that start going in the this direction, but then they fly off to the side. Okay, now on this side, sometimes I will do it backwards instead of going that way because I'm right-handed. I will do it backwards. So this. But it always has to connect in the direction that we were painting the hair before. I'm not going to do anything too dark um, on any of these little front pieces because I want to keep those light. I painted those with a lighter brown. So I'm really only adding this darker color where you can see it's already kind of dark, like here. already dark so that flyaway works and it just kind of is giving it a little bit more a little bit more interesting movement In the back this hair is going this direction, so we'll follow that direction, but we'll swoop it out at the end, like that. Mm, that's a little long for a flyaway. I think it should be a little shorter. I like that. Um. And oftentimes, now I'm I kind of saved the flyaways at the till the end because I wanted to demonstrate flyaways. But really, when I'm going along, whatever color I am painting with, I will often just do a few flyaways in each color. So when I started with brown, do some little light brown flyaways. And then um, as I add colors, then I have more of a variety, different kinds of flyaways. So they're not all the same. Okay, so what have we learned? We learned all about following the hair direction. And it starts with a good map. It starts with the mapping. And that mapping showed us how to fill in the hair and by following the mapping lines. And then we also learned that we can kind of have fun and curve off to the sides. But to do that, we need to start where the hair direction is already going. And then you can do something interesting like that. So now you know all about how mapping will help you. It helps you the whole way through to keep a nice consistent direction of the hair. Thanks for watching.